Thank you for the opportunity to give this talk. My name is Alexandra Berger, and today I will be presenting our abstract, Post-Artificial Urinary Sphincter Prostate Radiation is a Predictor of Urethral Atrophy with Recurrent Incontinence. This is data from Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. I have no disclosures. As a point of introduction, prior data suggests that radiation is associated with shorter artificial urinary sphincter or AUS device survival. However, there is a paucity of data on outcomes of patients who undergo radiation after AUS. Thus, we aim to compare AUS outcomes between patients receiving prostate radiation before or after AUS placement. We utilize the Partners Research Patient Data Registry, which is our institutional database. We included all men who underwent AUS as well as radical prostatectomy and prostate radiation between 1989 and 2019 at Mass General Brigham. After these patients were identified, we undertook a retrospective chart review to collect demographic and clinical information. Patients were grouped by radiation before or after AUS and clustered by surgeon. Our primary outcomes included urethral atrophy, which we defined as recurrent incontinence with a functional device, revision surgery for atrophy, time to urethral atrophy, and time to revision surgery for atrophy. Time to outcome was calculated from the date by which patients had received both AUS and radiation. We performed univariate, multivariable logistic, and Cox proportional hazard survival analyses. We included 177 patients. Of these, 158 or 89% underwent radiation prior to AUS at a median 45 months prior. 19 patients or 11% underwent radiation after AUS at a median 18 months after. There was no difference in age, race, Charleston comorbidity index, smoking, diabetes, prior male urethral sling, prior endoscopic bulking agent injection, pre-existing bladder neck contracture, androgen deprivation, or AUS cuff size between groups. Median follow-up post-exposure was 35 months, and there was no difference between groups. On univariate analysis, we found that atrophy occurred in significantly more men in the radiation after AUS group. 53% of patients versus 10% of patients, with a p-value of less than 0.001. Atrophy also occurred earlier in the group receiving radiation after AUS, at 12.0 versus 35.5 months, with a p-value of 0.04. On multivariable analysis, when accounting for all collected variables, Receipt of radiation after AUS was associated with recurrent incontinence due to atrophy with an odds ratio of 8.2 and a p-value of less than 0.001. Previous urethral sling was also associated with atrophy. In addition, receipt of radiation after AUS was associated with revision for atrophy with an odds ratio of 3.6 and a p-value of 0.03. On our multivariable survival analysis, we demonstrated that those with radiation after AUS developed atrophy earlier, similarly to univariate analysis at 12.0 months versus 35.5 months. Our survival curve is depicted here. Similarly, those undergoing radiation after AUS also had a shorter time to device revision for atrophy. 46 months versus 57 months post-exposure. And this is our survival cord curve for that data. Finally, there was no difference in urologic complications, erosion, explant, or revision between those undergoing AUS before or after radiation on either univariate or multivariable analysis. In conclusion, Post-AUS radiation is associated with higher rates of atrophy, as well as shorter time to atrophy and revision for atrophy. This suggests that if radiation is anticipated, urologists should consider waiting until radiation is complete prior to AUS insertion. Thank you.